One of the most beautiful things about this, about this college, about City College, is that it's one of the few institutions in San Francisco that is important to all working people in this city. Whether you're old, young, whether you're here for Latinx studies, for queer studies, for women's studies, whether you're here down at Evans campus learning how to repair things and build this city, whether you're building the economy, whether you're here for older adults, whether you're learning a language, it is important. This serves the entire working class of San Francisco, and that is what we are going to fight for, right? Just like the Avengers, when they say how we're going to fight for it, we can say whatever it, it takes. takes. If we have to fight at the ballot box, we'll fight there. If we have to go occupy this building or any other building, if we have to take to the streets, we are going to do whatever it, it takes. takes. But thy picture be much pleasures then from thee, much more must flow. And soonest our best men with thee to go, rest of their bones and souls delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings and desperate men, and thus with poison, war, and sickness dwell. And poppier charms can make us sleep as well, and better than thy stroke. Why swellest thou then? My name is Tamina Khan, and I teach in the English department and the Interdisciplinary Studies department. Well, we are having a funeral to remember all the classes that have been cut from our, uh, from our schedule for this semester, and we have classes that are on, on deck to be cut in the, in, the spring, in the spring semester as well. So we are having a funeral to, um, to demonstrate to the outside world, to, well, to, to our college community, that you know, uh, uh, cutting a class is like a death. Right? It's, um, it's, 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 it, it symbolizes the, the death of the hopes and dreams of our college community when we lose our classes, when we lose crucial classes like our ethnic studies classes, our diversity studies classes, our aircraft maintenance classes. Um, classes Why that is this happening? I mean, San Francisco, more billionaires than any other city. Absolutely. And yet, I mean, they don't have enough money for classes? Here. Right. Well, that is, I guess, the billion dollar question. So why don't we have money for our, our classes? And why are the administrators getting a big, enormous raise um, when, we are, when, when we are being told that we are in a deficit and, we, uh, and we, need, we all need to cut back, we need to sacrifice, we need to lay people off because their classes are not being renewed. And, and yet the administrators are essentially giving themselves um, raises of up to 125000 And so this is the 50th anniversary of the San Francisco <coughs> State strike that yes. established ethnic studies. And here at yes. City College, the ethnic studies department may be in jeopardy? Is that? That is absolutely true, yeah. So we are, the ethnic studies classes, the diversity collaborative has, has taken big hits over uh, for, for fall semester and, uh, and um, have been told that uh, they will, th there will be even greater hits um, in spring semester. Yeah. And I thought that the uh, chancellor, Mark Rocha, had a priority for the students. I understand that counselors have also been cut yes. for international students who need counselors. Absolutely. So this is, you know, a big uh, hypocrisy from the chancellor where, you know, he's, he has a slogan that's saying students first and, um, and clearly the priorities are not students first. So the priorities are administrators first, students last, as a matter of fact, because we are, um, we're cutting classes and students are speaking up for, for the classes that they need and not being heard. And what can people do about it who want to support City College, who believe in the right to a, a good public education right here in San Francisco? Absolutely. So check out what we're doing at AFT2121.org. Um, check out what the student, student movements are doing. We have the... Um, we have at CCSF Collective and at CCSF Student Assembly on social media. Check those out. Come out to um, co come out to the Board of Trustees meetings and make public comment and and uh, say that you're standing for public education. You're uh, not going to let the college be destroyed. We are not going to let the college be destroyed. We are City College. We all, all of us here today, are City College, and we are we are standing up for City College. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Steadily, steadily, in solidarity, fight until we win. Yay! My name is
name is Larry Pasqual, class of 2002, and I'm speaking on behalf of Professor Deborah Shaw. And obviously, I'm going to get emotional about this. Um, who among you have seen one of our spring musicals or any of the plays that you've seen? Raise your hand. Right? It's a great timing. Well, guess what? And I'm just going to say this just with subservient. Next year, she was let go, and she's a choreographer, Professor Deborah Shaw. And she is a choreographer. She's actually also an artist in residence. She's been in tons of uh, musical productions and musical theater productions, not just here at City College of San Francisco, but just around at University of San Francisco, you know, um, American Conservatory of Theater, probably even Broadway quality. Actually, she's going to totally kick my ass about that. She is Broadway quality. And guess what? Next year, we don't have a spring musical. It's all because of these fucking cuts. And I say that, like I say, just every single time to some of my teachers, and I'm comforting them in Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, is keep on fighting on because this is a dangerous thing to do to our community. And it not just, it, it, it just doesn't affect just our teachers here, but our community members, me personally, I was, when I was here in City College, I was involved in a lot of the musicals as well as the arts and the music program. We have tons and tons of beautiful teachers that actually come in here and risk as well as sacrifice their own time with their families just to make our musicals as well as our performances happen. So if you think that this is worth something to say, please go to social media and say, we want the musicals to be back. Let's say that one more time. We want the musicals to be back. And then we want all these corporate bullshit to stop. Let's do it again. We want all this corporate bullshit to stop. And I, I want to tell you guys a personal story. I, I just been going through a lot of stuff one year. And my mom was going through breast cancer. And... Um, I just needed a place to be with friends, and not just friends, but with family. And come over here. I was in a production. Um, she did Mamma Mia with me, but I was in a production called. God, I've done so much, but. Um, the Good News. And then I was one of the lead singers of The Good News. I was cast it as pooch. And every single time I went to my mom as, as her chemo buddy, when she was going through her chemotherapy, I would just cry my eyes out in the hospital corridor. But then, at night, I get to come to a musical theater experience at Diego Rivera Theater to be with people like her who just push me on and say, you know, your mom's going to get better. Everything's, you're going to go through all this stuff, and you're going to come out on top of it. And guess who was in my corner at that time? Professor Deborah Shaw, who's also a cancer survivor herself, mm -hmm. and said, you know what? I've done it. Your mom's going to fucking do it. She's going to go over it. And so far, thanks to God, goddess, she is five years cancer-free because right. of that. And Yay. that's the type of community that we need here, people that are in musical theater, we act on stage, but we also are humans just like you, and we have our depression problems. We have all this bills to pay and everything, but what we do is we come, and we come as a community, and we come to support each other in difficult times like that. My name is Dariush. So talk about your, your life and your experience here at City College. Well, so since I've been here, well, it's been a year and a half I've been at City College. When I decided to come back to school, I was... My, my work had started to slow down. I was paycheck to paycheck is how I'd been living. And when my, my paychecks tightened up, uh, I wasn't able to afford housing anymore. I was kind of faced with two choices is the way I was looking at it. It's either really leave the Bay Area, which has been my home my whole life. I grew up here and find somewhere that's more affordable to live. Or, or I'd, I'd been seeing these ads on the BART going to work every day about Free City. And I kept thinking, man, it, I just didn't think it was going to be for me, and things started getting bad at work, and I thought, well, hell, let me just apply and see how this goes. So I did, and 
they accepted me and everything moved forward. I mean, here I am now, a year and a half later, it was very difficult. Half of the connections that I made in departments ended up transferring to another school where the work wasn't as difficult, where the pay was better. Even if the pay was the same, if it was half the stress, it, all of these bright, amazing people in all of the different departments that I've had to, to utilize to make it through this process, just leaving me and having to make new connections, people that hadn't been trained yet, just this cycle of frustration and no, 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 and finally finding somebody that spent the extra time to help me get a yes to get the last of the things I needed to get through this process. That's, uh, I think that pretty well describes how it's been for me the last year and a half, is frustration, a lot of caring and eventual success. And a lot of students are homeless. They can't even afford to live in San Francisco. What do you think about a society, the billionaires here, when you have all this wealth and yet you can't uh, have people who are able to live, uh, eat? And so it's 100% an access issue and until this opportunity for me, I did not have access to education. I was just not capable of supporting myself and getting my education. The whole pull yourself up by your bootstraps and it's it's on you to, to make, you know, make it successful or not. It's been very difficult for me to make this successful and that was with the support of the community, the faculty, the staff, the students, everyone here has helped me. I have definitely not done this on my own. This is an access issue, 100%. Here I am mourning the loss of 25% of my income as my hours have been significantly cut. And with that loss, I'm mourning the loss of being able to move into a safer, quieter apartment where I can concentrate on preparing my lessons. I am also mourning for my students who have lost the attention that I would otherwise be dedicating to them because I had to pick up extra work at a different college. I am also mourning my students' ability to finish their assignments on time which they are greatly limited because of the loss of lab hours in our photography department. Uh, Students so. are significantly impacted by these cuts because they are no longer able to work on Fridays and their hours are cut every other day of the week. This has created significant problems for students being able to finish their degrees, to finish their assignments, and to feel the sense of community that this college can provide for them. So I am mourning with you today this great loss, and I am encouraged by how many of you came forward to mourn this loss together. Thank you. Dearly beloved, thank you so much for coming, and thank you for caring for this college that means so much, not only just to the students, but to the whole of San Francisco. Um, I'm an alumni from long ago, far away in another century. Um, what I have seen this college devolve to is absolutely horrifying. As a taxpayer, it, 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 it's just wrong. And um, in the course of these cutbacks, admin finally found me a purse that matches my paycheck. Um, but more importantly, this has led to the death of a very important resource center, which today is a shadow of what it used to be. And uh, hold, why don't you come up here? Um, it led to the loss of at least five student jobs, including uh, one of my favorite staff members, uh, Paul. Um, this is an opportunity for students um, to have a community, a safe space. That obviously is not of value, and that is heartbreaking to me. Um, however, what I will say, hi Sue, how you doing? Why don't you come over here too? This is the face of the KRC. These are the people that are not getting an answer to food insecurity or to have a safe space where they can be themselves, where they feel respected and loved, um, which is part of the mission this college needs to have uh, for those students. Uh, meantime, we do have, or we have a legacy in the LGBT world of having worked for our basic rights in the, in the 70s, uh, the world of AIDS, then we went into the world of medical marijuana, we went into then the world of more civil rights and same-sex marriage. And we will always win. It may be a very rough road, everybody, but we will win in the end because our cause is right. And so we have to demand that we receive or just do. These are your tax dollars that you and your people have all worked for. And to be denied service, denied classes, 
um, is just wrong. There's a tone deafness here that must be addressed. That's what I see more troubling than anything else because this is the QRC. All of us are the QRC and we don't have that. Today it is a shadow that does not answer food insecurity, does not offer even minimal amount of hours, which is in the name of savings, really, that's called, that's called really blowing your foot off, to quote our dear chancellor. But meantime, I ask for you to continue mobilizing, continue demanding, keep this in the front pages. Do not allow this to continue. Uh, there has to be a point where you say no, and I really am so happy that you have come maybe to celebrate but, uh, instead of mourn, because we're going to celebrate a new beginning. My name is Marcos Cruz. Uh, yeah, I'm an on and off student right now at City College, and I work with the teachers union as a student organizer. Yeah. And there's a rally here, a funeral. What's, what's this all about? It's very sad, and I think that's why you know the students that students and faculty that organize this, um, you know, decided to make this uh, a, a type of funeral march because. And, uh, and Mark Rocha says he has your interest in mind. The students, you don't believe him? No, I don't. Mark Rocha has had multiple like, you know, he has a past at community college. It's not, it's not a good past. Like uh, Pasadena Community College voted no confidence. Uh, you know, had a vote of no confidence against him when he shut down the college for a semester, you know, so Mark Roger has spent more time in the private, uh, you know, school system than, than in the public one, and... You think this is part of privatization of uh, City College? Yeah, absolutely, this is exactly what that is. I mean, it's about shrinking the college, uh, just establishing programs that are not really what City College has been about, you know, focusing on the students, serve, like, students first, which is just... I don't know what that means to them, but uh, they, to them it's just larger classes, uh, things like that. Going uh, online? Going online, yeah. I guess people just uh, really, really want to uh, move, move this college to an online space that doesn't really serve the needs of the diverse community that we have in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, it's definitely part of the privatization effort. It's, uh, I mean, you know, we fought against the ACCJC and won that. Um, and. It just seems like this is like the same thing, but just from the inside. My name is Makula Godwin. I'm a lifelong learner and a community activist. Let's have another chance. Stop the back room. Okay. Stop the back room deals. 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 Thanks, everybody. I am very, very concerned as a neighbor, uh, as a taxpayer, that we get ripped off as a community. Our needs and our wishes and what we are about is not considered by people who go behind the doors and decide that they should have more money and they should make other people, whether it be faculty or students, suffer. We've got to put an end to this. We've got to save this college. So it is very important that we keep this activism going Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, <laughs> tell your uh, fellow students to come out and, and join the struggle. It's going to take strategy, it's going to take our persistence to make sure that this college stays intact as a family 
and as a community asset, not to be used for the benefit of the few, uh, for the suffering of the masses. My name is Steve Zeltzer. I'm with KPFA. I do a program on working people called Work Week. Fifty years ago, there was a strike at San Francisco State. Yes. Right. That's when ethnic studies was started. It was a six month long strike for ethnic studies and for open admissions, which means free admission to all working class people in California and San Francisco. We are going backwards. When I heard they're attacking labor studies, ethnic studies, I said, what is going on here at this college? When you have more billionaires in San Francisco than almost any place in the world and they don't have money? For ethnic studies, they don't have money for classes. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And I've been at one of the board meetings when this guy Rocha, this scam artist, said, well, we may have an earthquake, so I have to hire an administrator for the future earthquake. Now, is that a priority? So he's been through earthquakes. I would say put the classes back. Hire the teachers. Hire the counselors. That's what we should be doing. This is an emergency. People's lives are being destroyed. Young people who don't have resources, who are homeless, who don't have enough to eat. Why are they suffering in this rich city? We have to say enough is enough. Tomorrow there's a board of trustees meeting, and these board right now, they had a secret meeting last night. They're talking about how uh, salary increase to the executives. I say stop the executive salary increases, uh, increases, give that money to the students, give that money to the teachers, and make this a great university, fully funded as it should be in San Francisco. Thank you, Brother yeah, Francisco. Yeah. Well, my name is uh, Ricardo Ortiz. I'm a supporter of Labor Fest. I'm a community resident, and I uh, took a couple of uh, courses uh, a few years ago right here. I'm a product of the student movement. I'm from Puerto Rico, and I uh, was one to politics at the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras, home of many class troubles and triumphs and victories. So I just wanted to start to say that uh, this is happening right here on campus. These, uh, uh, private, uh, you know, eliminating courses, et cetera, et cetera. But this is, these cuts, but this is part of a wave of new liberalism that is going around the world. Right there in Puerto Rico, as for example, the Obama administration and he, Congress installed a fiscal control board that one of the targets of the board is the uni public university of Puerto Rico. And the students over there and faculty and workers have waged many fights to prevent, you know, more cuts and more privatization of the system. So this is something that is going on around the world. And uh, workers of the world, the youth of the world have to unite and fight back against our masters, which are the capitalist rulers of uh, this country and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, form an independent working class foundation because, uh, brothers and sisters, yeah. yes. we cannot trust any of the two ruling parties in the United States and nowhere. They are for the system. They are for privatization. They are for neoliberalism. Right now, as they make these cuts right here, they just want to build more F-35, F-35 fighter bombers. You know, spending billions and billions of uh, dollars in military hardcore aircraft and weaponry to bomb our brothers and sisters around the world. And I gotta tell you something, we cannot trust any politician in this matter. The darling of the liberals right now, Bernie Sanders supports the F-35. And I got articles right here. If you want to see it, I can show it to you. He supports not only the building of the F-35, he wants the Vermont National Guard to have F-35. I don't know who he wants to fight, you know. So uh, we got to oppose all politicians that are coming from the ruling class from both the Democrats and the Republicans. Let's build a workers' party. Yes. Let's yes. get rid of this system called capitalism. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
staff. They're cutting classes left and right because you're already done. But together we will win. Fight. Fight to save our city.